Borussia Dortmund currently sits second in the Bundesliga, so what's the problem? Their defense. It's abysmal. So before we get into this video, if we get 3,000 likes, then that would be fantastic. Now, as I said before, Borussia Dortmund are currently second place and they've scored the third most amount of goals. The issue is they are the eighth worst defense in the league. Now, just to put that into perspective, they have conceded four fewer than 16th place Augsburg and also they have scored seven less than 19th place Stuttgart. Now, keep in mind also, this is a team that holds on to 60% of the ball on average. Outside the Bundesliga is much worse and really shows you just how bad this defense really is. They didn't advance out of their group in the Champions League, losing to Ajax twice, conceding a total of seven goals, only scoring once against them. And Dortmund also lost to Sporting CP 3-1, and that's what sealed their fates of Europa League football. Beva Bay then lost to Sao Paulo 2-1 in the DFB Pokal. Now, I've talked about stats. Let me actually show you some screenshots from that Sao Paulo game, just to show you how terrible this defense really is. Look at the Sao Pauli player here, who is currently surrounded by a clump of five Dortmund defenders. In this cluster, you have left back Rafael Guerrero, which, you know, pretty normal stuff so far. But then you have both center backs, Mats Hummels and Manuel Kanji, within a couple meters of each other. And keep in mind, there's just two or three Sao Pauli players on that one side. Which means, as a result, then right back Thomas Mounier has to shift himself way out of position. Defending acts quite like a pendulum but not to this extreme extent. The next frame shows us a ball played out wide to São Paulo's Marcel Hertel, a midfielder who probably should have been picked out by Axel Witzel, who also was in that cluster. As a result, with the whole defensive shape out of whack, Thomas Mounier then has to deal with Hertel, while forward Etienne Amanido makes a run underlapping the unsuspecting and ball-watching Manuel Akanji. Marco Reus, who was playing goddamn right winger, is now having to track back to do what should have been Akanji's job. However, by then, it's too late and Sampaoli score. That kind of defending is something that not even Erling Haaland can bail you out of. And this guy has more goals than games this season, pretty much throughout his entire career in fact. And trust me, this is only one of many examples of how horrendous Dortmund's defending is. In Amsterdam, all Ajax had to do was switch up play and already Dortmund were exposed. I mean, hell, Leverkusen bagged five goals and they have a pretty weak defense themselves. And recently, which is why I'm making this video, Rangers scored four goals against Dortmund. Actually, three of them came within 11 game minutes. Now, over the past years, we have seen Dortmund's defense be a little questionable at times. But this season, I just knew it was going to be a complete shit show. After the first six games, Dortmund conceded 12 times. No other team in the top 11 had even gone past 10 conceded. Now, despite being out of position from time to time and having a couple errors here or there, Manuel Akanji is still a very good defender, and he's definitely Dortmund's best defender. The problem is, nowadays, you can't just have one good defender, you need both to be on the same page, and Mats Hummels is definitely not. And then there's also Dan Axel Zagadou, who I really haven't seen any improvements since the first time I watched him back in 2020 against PSG. Another player who's done pretty well is the new goalkeeper signing Gregor Kobel. He's in the 65th percentile, above average, for post-shot expected goals per shot on target. In layman's terms, post-shot XG measures how likely the goalkeeper is to save the shot. A higher number indicates the shots on target the keeper faced were more difficult to stop. But what seems to be the bigger problem Problem with Dortmund. Now this isn't exactly one of my points, but I still want to mention it. My boy Jem made a really good point, and you should definitely show him some love. There'll be the video and the annotations above there, so be sure to check him out. Man deserves all the love in the world, so do it. Make sure. I'll find out, and I'll do something. But he mentioned how every single time Dortmund need a result, they flounder. And this has been the case for many years now. One of the examples I could think of is the 2018-19 Bundesliga season. Dortmund were on fire that season, taking advantage of a Bayern Munich that just wasn't up to par at the time. From match day 6 to match day 24, they were top of the league. A couple matches later, the team was second going into a match against Bayern they desperately need to get a result from. And they lost 5-0. It will never happen. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever, not ever. And there are plenty of other examples throughout the last few years where you have seen Dortmund come so close 
only to choke it in the end. However, for me, I think Beva Bay's issues come down to three things. Nostalgia, subpar transfer recruiting, and a business model that will forever hold this club back. Under Jurgen Klopp during the rock and roll era, Dortmund won two straight Bundesliga titles in 2011-2012, one DFB Pokal in 2012, two Super Cups in 2013 and 2014, and they were even runners-up in the 2012-2013 Champions League. Ever since Jurgen Klopp left in 2015, it's like Dortmund have been trying to find their new Jurgen Klopp. A coach who not only has those similar tactics, but one that can work with youngsters just as well as Jurgen Klopp did. And because of this constant influx of coaches every other season, it's hard for the players because they have to readapt. And in terms of transfer recruiting, Dortmund haven't been that great at it. They've had some hits like Rafael Guerrero, Erling Haaland, Jaden Sancho, Jude Bellingham, but that's only a couple hits out of a ton of misses. Let's go over a couple ever since Jurgen Klopp left. Gonzalo Castro for 11 million in 2015-16. He started well with Dortmund in the first season, and then after that, his form just fizzled out. Emre Moore for 9 million and Andre Schürrle for 30 million in 2016-17. Schürrle made only 33 appearances over four seasons and was actually loaned out twice. Emre Moore was to be the exceptional wonder kid, but his attitude was shit. I denounce, I repudiate, and condemn him. Basically, Andre Yarmolenko for 25 million and Omer Toprak for 12 million in 2017-18. Yarmolenko, once again, quite like Gonzalo Castro, started out well and then fizzled out, and he left after one season, by the way. Omer Toprak, you're starting to see a pattern where there's just a one season wonder, and then that's about it. In 2018-19, Dortmund signed Leonardo Bellardi. Bellardi was purchased for 15 million, and he only made 12 appearances with the senior team. I don't think I have to say anything else there. Then finally we have 2019-20 when Dortmund signed Nico Schultz for 20.5 million and unfortunately things just really haven't worked out so far. But this year exposed the recruiting even more when you see how all Dortmund brought in was a goalkeeper and a striker knowing damn well there were probably other positions that could have had improvements. Now luckily this year their sporting director is leaving and replacing him is Sebastian Kell, a bit of a legend. Now lastly, the third one. The business model. When a club is constantly seen as a stepping stone basically for youngsters, they're not really going to achieve much. Especially in a time and age where richer clubs are getting even richer, this just means every time Beva Bay sell one of their best talents, they're farther back than ever before. For example, we saw Ajax reach the semi-finals of the Champions League in 2018-19. It's only now that we're seeing them as potential contenders again, and keep in mind, this is with an excellent tactician. Now, I get that I'm making this video pretty much after Dortmund destroyed Mönchengladbach 6-0, but keep in mind, out of a possible 33 points as of recent, Munch and Gladbach only have eight. Now, I have been quite the jinxer on Twitter, so maybe all of a sudden Dortmund just turn it around from here on out. Maybe they do get past Rangers. There's only a two goal deficit, and not to mention no away goal rule, so you never know. Also, I think this is the first time on the channel that I've talked about the Bundesliga, so I think that's all of the top five leagues now. But alas, a massive shout out to our patrons, of course Janos Balas, Alex Rod, Daniel Ortiz, Edgar AS, Joseph Bonfante, Lacazette Goat. Windy Min Tang, Senaid Ferhad Begovic, The Motor Drive, Victor, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joe Gallagher, Tomicus, Andres was never here, Big Bird, Cash Getty, Igzo, Itachi the Homie, Casa, Mark Morcos, and Nathan Trong. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations up there. Feel free to follow my Twitter to see if I jinx any other team. Follow my Instagram if you want, follow my TikTok trying to get to 6,000, and of course, you can follow my inactive Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.